Howdy, my name is David Ryan, and this is my first soap making video. A little bit about me, I live in Austin, Texas, and I started making soap um, as a hobby about September last year, and I discovered that I really like doing it, and I'd like to uh, go ahead and try and make a soap making business within the next five years, and so I'm going to start uh, documenting that process. Um, I um, am currently waiting for my light solution to cool down for my first batch of soap. I'll be making two today. One is a coconut and palm free soap that is a variation on one I previously made for a coworker who has a daughter who's allergic to all coconut and palm products. Uh, the other one is I'm experimenting with a soap base that I will use uh, when I begin my business. Um, currently, my temperatures of my oil is 79 and my lye solution is, oh, 89. Uh, I'm gonna wait, let it cool down just a little bit more before I start uh, going. But um, this is actually today the two batches of soap that I'm going to be making are my seventh and eighth batches, or possibly my eighth or ninth batch. Um, one of the two. Gear, um, <laughs> seventh, and, six, seventh and eighth, plus or minus one. <laughs> uh, or possibly plus one. Uh, I kind of wanted to try making soap way back in like 2013 when one of my friends on Facebook posted a video doing a tutorial on cold process soap. But um, I always thought about it around November to make Christmas presents for my coworkers, and it was always too late to do that since soap takes four to six to eight, depending on how soft it is, weeks to um, actually um, cure and be well, really usable and at uh, least feel good. And um, so I kept saying, "Well, next year." Well, next year, because I don't always think about it around November. But then. You know what happened last year, and I watched a lot of YouTube, and I kind of came across Katie Carson's Royalty Soaps channel, um, which, if you found my channel and you're not familiar with her, I will put a link in my description. She has a tutorial about how to make your first three types of soap, but three different techniques in it. Also, how a lot of safety information, and how to get your initial equipment as cheap as possible, and um, I did the those three, which um, she does an orange, a pink, and a green uh, layered soap, and then a three color purple and blue drop swirl uh, with different scents. And then my next batch after that was actually a three color um, purple and blue lavender soap for uh, my mom. And then I did uh, the, um, the uh, coconut and palm free soap for my coworker's daughter. And then I also did a green and white tea soap made with half the batch of green tea instead of water for the lye solution, and half white tea for the uh, um, uh, lye solution. And uh, I obviously covered that green, half green, half white. I tried to go for a yin yang type thing, but the green tea soap seized up really badly, uh, so I wasn't able to shape it before I poured over the white tea soap on top of it as much as I wanted to. But it still turned out good, it feels good. Um, I kind of went overboard with the ingredients. I'm trying to simplify that down because um, once I do start this business, I'm gonna have. I, I was. I've been watching videos about how to start simple and then add complexity to it, just so you can afford to actually do everything. So um, my oils now are at 78, and my solution is 89. So, I will be uh, starting that soon. Um, I'm not going to put, be putting any uh, fragrances or colors into my um, soap. I'm calling it Soap Base A. It has um, coconut oil, olive oil, mango butter, and castor oil in it. Um, I'm also trying to do uh, add calum clay and uh, sodium lactate to it just to see how they behave with this mix and if I need to. Um, use more or less of either of them. I'm not putting any fragrance oil yet because I have a specific blend in mind that I'd like to try, but I haven't gotten all of the things that I need for that. Actually, I think it was just delivered. I saw the Amazon guy just walk over to my door. So I'm actually on my porch because I don't have a good, a really big kitchen and the rest of the apartment has carpet, so I don't want live crystals on the carpet to burn my feet or my roommate's feet. So out here. I have, I've had lids on my uh, lye solution while I've been working on uh, measuring out all the oils and everything so nothing falls in, so no problem with that. Um, 
the uh, other soap I'm doing today is actually um, going to have it. It is really complicated. I'm going to simplify it after I do this one. I'm just using it, doing it again to use up the rest of the oils I got for it. It's got avocado oil, avocado butter, olive oil, castor oil, and sweet almond oil in it. And I think that's it. Um, I'm going to be coloring that one green, just so it's easier to recognize from this. Oh yeah, I mean, that's the one I'm, I, I'm actually adding honey to it this time to see how that, uh, to try and give it some extra lather. And um, also just to, um, so that might actually make it brown, but I want to make it definitely distinct from this soap, which is probably going to be almost perfectly white. Um, and it looks like my lye solution and my oils are within 10 degrees of each other. So I'm going to uh, uh, cut from here and get that set up so you can see me mixing it together. Okay, so um, I'm all ready to go. First, I am going to move my cowl and clay over here. And I'm going to kind of mix that up a little bit so it's ready. Put my fork there. And then, um, put my blender in here. Burp it. Oh crap, that caused a lot of bubbles. Oh. Um, and then I'm going to pour my life solution down my stick blender. I got the stick blender from Amazon and um, it works fine. I just don't like that it has a flat head to it so it's hard. It, um, soap stays on it afterwards. I'm gonna put that over here. Now I'm going to blend this until it gets the trace and uh, I might have to go ahead and dub. So I'm going to add my cow and clay. I know that you usually add the cow and clay with your fragrance oils, but I'm not adding any, so I just used some of the water from the lye solution to... Oops, that's not really... It's up very well, so... Yeah, I need to get rid of these containers because they are... Kinda, the corners, even though they're round, are hard to. So gonna. Oh boy, yeah, that didn't. That was a kind of a failure for that. So next, I'll learn from next time. And then we're gonna scrape as much of this as possible and then since I'm going to be making another batch pretty quickly I'm going to wipe this down really really well because I want to obviously make another batch and so now I got my one pound mold I'm just gonna pour that in there. Hope y'all can see that. I think so. And, ah, okay. I'm gonna stop there. And then I'm gonna get my Texas soap mold and fill up one of the great states of Texas in there. It's probably not enough for a second one, so I'm just gonna, oops. I might have enough. Well, it'll be a thin state of Texas, I guess. Gonna wipe out this bowl so it's easier to clean later. 
That's a trick that I have uh, learned from watching a lot of videos. Um, I do recommend that if you do watch a lot of videos, or before you do so, watch a lot of videos, see uh, what people say about different things. Um, and I'm uh, tapping this to get bubbles out. But this mold is a little bit um, more difficult. Uh, I'm going to clean these spots up here. This table is $34 from Walmart, and it's kind of a neat little table to be able to come out here and uh, make my soap. Uh, the one thing I don't like about this mold is that it is a bit wobbly, and so it's hard to get good tap, but bubbles are coming out, so that's good. I'm going to keep the Texas mold out here, because um, I'm going to use that as an overflow for my other soap. So, we'll get to that in a few minutes, but for you, it will be almost instantly. So, I'm going to cut this off right now. So, it seems that today I'm having a learning experience, because um, I got my... Uh, second batch of soap ready. Um, I got the mica in it since it's just one color. And then um, my lye solution got to a point where it was within 10 degrees. And I thought um, when you're adding honey to soap, you can either put it in at trace or in the cooled lye solution. And that is what I attempted to do and immediately jumped back up to 107 degrees. So I have and my oils are 75 degrees, so I have a little bit to wait, unless you are supposed to just put it in there when it gets hot again, which I don't think you're supposed to do. And since I don't want to ruin a batch of soap, I guess I am going to have to just wait for it to cool down again, which I don't think it's going to do. It's slowly increasing because it's reacting with the sugar. So um, I uh, do I want to do experiments time where I ruin some a very complex blend of oils that kind of is expensive or do I exercise? Actually, actually, no, it is going down slowly, but it is going down. So I guess I will wait for, I guess, probably a half an hour or so, because it took that long for it to cool down to a workable temperature already. And then work from there, and I will, uh, I'll get back to you then. But yeah, I uh, just wanted to kind of cut in right now and say I'm I'm having a learning experience. Uh, so in case anyone else is wanting to try making soap with honey, uh, that you don't make my same mistake. So next time I'm going to try just adding the honey at Trace um, ne this next time instead of this because I wanted to be mixing and done now and now I'm going to have to wait for a while. And But now I know for next time that this is um, the better idea. Okay, so I finally got the uh, lye solution and the oils to be the similar temperature. So, I uh, while that was happening, I mixed my uh, green mica into the oil. Uh, the mica that I'm using is called the Maniacal P from Mad Micas. Um, I was going to try using the one called Lounge Lizard, but I accidentally picked up the wrong one. But this one should be brighter than that one. Or, if the uh, lye solution is anything to any indicator, it might just turn um, a maniacal pea soup color. Who knows? Uh, but I will uh, go ahead and um, pour this down my stick blender, like so. When I initially turned, put the honey water in it, it turned bright red. But now, it's a 
Well, a honey color, I guess. Um, let me get my spatula to make sure I get all of that fly solution in there. I think the honey kind of sank to the bottom a little bit, but that's okay, I guess. Anyway, let's get blending, and I'll be care more careful this time. I got a regular loaf mold this time. It's, this is another one pound batch, but, you know, uh, so let's go. I should probably scrape off my stick blender and actually before I go any further and really wipe it down but now I've gotten most of the gunk out of the stick blender okay so I'm gonna actually unplug my stick blender from the wall and then move it over here so I have room. And then I'm going to take my mold and do the scrapey scrapey. Uh, I shouldn't say that. I'm, that's a that's trademark Katie Carson, I guess. Not, not really. But, um, uh, yeah, that um, thickened up pretty quickly. Um, it's a lot thicker than my first batch, that's for sure. So, yeah. Scrape that up right away. And so, one of the things that you do have to worry about when working with honey is that it will actually cause your soap to cook hot. And apparently some people have had a volcano, which I'm hoping that since this is only half filling the mold, I won't have to worry about that. But the other thing you need to worry about is cracking. So I'm just gonna get all these bubbles out. Okay, so I'm gonna call that good enough for now. I'm more worried about the formula than I am bubbles in the soap. Well, uh, now that I've done, now that I am done. Uh, making the soap. I am going to wait about 24, 48 hours and then I'm going to cut the soap and I will show y'all what it looks like when it's cut. It's not going to be too exciting because they are both single colored soaps, but um, I'm interested in see what the stuff I've added to it, which I haven't used previously, the sodium lactate and the honey and the callum clay, how that affects each soap. And um, hopefully the uh, palm oil, palm and coconut free soap does not react super adversely to the honey in it. Um, so uh, I will uh, cut to when I'm cutting. Okay, so it's been about 24 hours and I am uh, ready to cut the soap. I have uh, the two molded Texas ones plus the big block of the mango butter, coconut oil, olive oil, castor oil, soap based A as I'm calling it. And then the um, coconut and palm free one, which amazingly has not discolored. So I'm excited about that. But I worry that since it has a lot more soft oils in it, 
it might still need another day to cure or set up. Uh, and I'm actually kind of worried that I'm not going to be able to cut the soap base A uh, just because I put the sodium lactate in. Um, but on hand, I have a cheese slicer, which has served me so well in the past, and a potato slicer or potato peeler to um, uh, bevel the edges once I actually uh, cut everything. And also, before I get to that, uh, this is uh, tallow, tallow and avocado oil soap that I made last week for my friend. Um, and we also got one Texas out of it, too, just so y'all can see what that actually looks like. Um, I'd never worked with tallow before, and I'm excited to see how, how it turns out. And excited to send one to him once he actually gets back home. He's currently doing a whole uh, road trip across the United States, so... I can't mail it to him even in July when it, it will be ready. So uh, let's get to this. Okay, so first I'm going to actually just go ahead and get this uh, Texas soap out. I'm pretty sure it's, ooh yeah, it comes out pretty nice. This is actually kind of really soft and sticky. I might be jumping the gun a little bit, but let's get... This one out. This uh, this Texas was not ready. Obviously, poor little guy. But this one actually turned out pretty good. So um, we put out these over here. But um, well, let's see. Um, gonna un unmold the big mold. So. I'm going to put it, I'm going to stretch the sides, get some air in there, and just put it face down. There we go. <laughs> this is the first time I've actually unmolded something from this one before. Um, my friend actually did the unmolding for the uh, tallow soap, so <laughs> that was... Uh... So now, this is actually nice and soft, so I should be able to cut this pretty easily. So we're going to ta -da. first bar. Check out this next batch to get it out of the mold. The one thing I don't like about this mold is, despite the fact that it is very sturdy because of the wood. So, this bar is actually harder than the other one, which is surprising because I thought. That one had a bit more hard oil, plus I added sodium lactate. So that's surprising to me for that reason. And so now I am going to cut. Yeah, I might wanna. Okay, we're gonna. Oops. First block that.
And so, um, I'm happy with how these turned out. I am surprised that the coconut free one actually turned out a little bit harder than the, uh, Soap base A, which has coconut and uh, so, coconut and mango butter in it, and sodium lactate. Um, so maybe I need to put some more sodium lactate in it. The one that I got is a solution that is only 60% sodium lactate, so I might need to adjust for that, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, so... I'm not very good at the beveling yet, but I have a bunch of bars to practice on today. Well, that's it for my first soap making video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a like and subscribe. Uh, feel free to ask me questions if you have any about soap making. If there's something I'm doing wrong or could do better, or if you have ideas for me, please give me that. I want to improve. I want to grow as a soap maker and uh, as this... Uh, and I want to track my progress so I can see where I've come from and y'all can grow with me. And um, I've created a, a TikTok and an Instagram, Soapmaker2025. So if y'all want to see uh, other stuff from me, uh, follow me there. I will be putting up a little thing with all my previous soaps uh, pretty soon. And um, I will uh, probably post other stuff there just for fun. In the meantime, I don't know exactly how often I'll be able to post full soap making videos to YouTube because I do have a full time job that I'm working and I only have so much room for soap. To, um, although I'll probably be giving some of this stuff away, at least um, some of this stuff because I did make this for uh, someone else um, as a uh, experiment and then of course my friend will be getting most of these because he made it for uh, he want he was mostly interested in that he'll probably get let me have one maybe two bars of that hopefully hopefully two because I'm really interested in trying it once again thank you so much for watching my first video I hope you'll stick with me and watch me as I grow and I uh, hope you all have a great week